Hello, I'm Nathan and welcome to the second part of our Appian app build, the Office Relocation Request app. Today, I'm going to take you through the first stage of building our app, creating the data fabric. I'm going to build a number of records and relationships and in the interest of time, I'll have some record objects pre-built rather than repeating the same steps. Now for the Office Relocation Request app, there's a number of data sources that I plan to use. Most of these will be tables within an Appian hosted database, but I'll also want to use some data from other sources. That's the data fabric piece I mentioned. It allows you to unify data from multiple systems, enabling secure and easy access to enterprise data. So effectively creating relationships between sources where they may not have existed before. Now, as I'm digitizing a currently manual process, I'll also have to create a new table to hold the actual request itself. So I'm going to need a new record for the relocation request, a record with employee details from Salesforce, and a record of our offices and their relevant details, which in our case will be existing in another application already built on Appium. So let's get into it. You'll hopefully already be familiar with the steps for creating a new application within Appium, but if, if not, go and check out Academy Online and search for Create an Appian Application First Steps. The link is in the description below this video and all the details around creating application security and an initial objects is in that video for you. Now, first up, we need to define our new record type for holding these requests that we're gonna be creating in the office relocation. So clicking in to new request, a uh, new object, sorry, uh, we can create the object name, set the plural name, and if we want to put a description in there. And we'll skip the security settings for this stage, we'll just keep the default ones that are on there. Now, as I say, we're creating a new application to replace a manual process, meaning we don't have anywhere to store the data. But if we follow the prompts through, we've actually got an option here to create a new data model. And of course, we wanna make sure that that data is kept synchronized so that other applications can further down the line can make use of that. So we'll keep that one as it is. And Appium will then present us with a number of um, pre-created fields. And these will all be useful to us, but obviously we need some more specific fields that relate to our office relocation request. So I know we're going to need five additional fields here. So let's add in five fields below our ID. And these will need to hold the actual request information itself. So we need um, a field that will hold our um, old office. And we're actually gonna link that through to um, the Salesforce data that we mentioned. We need the new office. We need some notes that the employee may want to put in. So we'll leave that as a, a long text field. We need the move date and we'll set that as a date field. And then we also need to hold uh, some information around the employee itself. So we can put in employee ID in there as well. We've also been prompted with a couple of additional fields that might be relevant and not given that we're managing requests, we probably want to track the urgency of those, but also the status that we can filter out once they've been completed. So we can add in priority. We'll see that Appium then presents a list of choices for us that we can add in, and it will also create these as an additional record type for us. And we can add in status as well. And again, we'll get a related record type created. I'm actually going to change some of these values and we're going to call them requested, approved, rejected, and done. Finally, we also want to track who this particular request has been assigned to for completing it. So we'll add in assignee as another field type on there too. So now that we've got all of our fields set up, we can click next and we've got those two existing relationships created automatically, but We've mentioned already around using external data like Salesforce, for example, and also our existing offices, that's already a record that's been created. So we can hit new relationship and look up our related objects that we want to pull in. So let's pull in our employee data and that's the Salesforce backed record that's already been created. Obviously many requests could be made against one particular employee. 
So we'll use the existing relationship that's been uh, found and matched between our two different record types. And if we add another relationship again, this time we want to pull in our offices. And in this case, it's offering to create a new field for us, but we've already put in that office, old office field. So we can put that in as a selected value and add the relationship there. And then clicking through the steps, we're then presented with a summary of the data model that's going to be created. And this handy visual on the right hand side that shows us how all of those relationships between our different records will be created. Now we're creating this as an Appium database table, but this could also be downloaded and exported into your own data source if you wish. So hitting finish, we're then presented with our record that's ready for us to go. So what next? Well, there's a few other things that we want to think about before we start to get into adding data. And one of the things that further down the line we might to look, want to look into is process mining. This is where events come into play. So over in our navigation menu on the left, we can click into events and configure something called record events. So this will, in the background, record some of the key actions that are taking place. So when people are adding new requests or editing them, perhaps, we want to capture and record that that action has taken place. And this will become particularly useful when we look into process mining in another episode, because all of that data that's been gathered through the use of our application can be mined by Appian's process mining. So again, we'll keep the, set, uh, the settings that have been pre-created for us and hit generated. And now once we've completed this step, once we start using the record actions later on, events will automatically be recorded once those actions are getting used. Next up, we need to actually take some action on our data. So this is where we have the ability to create, update and edit our data. And Appian again makes it super easy to be able to carry out those steps. So over in our actions tab, we've got another prompt that guides us through generating record actions. And again, options are pre-selected. So if we wanted to create these individually, we could do, but we can do them all in one go. We have the ability to customize them so we can configure uh, which interfaces are used or what actions are uh, created. But if we hit generate, Again, we're brought to another screen that then confirms all of the objects that have automatically been created in the background by Appium. So these record actions will be the ones that get used as part of the application for interacting with it. So being able to raise a new relocation request, being able to update an existing one, or even close that off as well. So you can see those new actions have been created, new process models have been created, and then relevant interfaces have been created for those as well. Now, speaking of interfaces, one of the things that we need to be able to do is actually view our data. And the next episode will take us through in a bit more detail around creating sites, creating interfaces, and even editing interfaces that have been created automatically. But we need to be able to view a summary of the individual records that get added into the application. So again, if we click into the views section on our record, we're again prompted to follow a step-by-step -step guide to generate a record interface. Now, if you remember earlier on, we created a number of relationships involving other sources of data. So that employee record was coming from Salesforce. The office record was an existing record object elsewhere within Appium. So these are all pieces of information that we might want to see in the context of the request that's being raised. So when somebody raises a new request and selects an existing office, we want to know the address of that office. We want, might want to know a contact for that particular office. So that's all relevant data that we'll want to see on a record summary. So we can select those additional records as part of our view to be used here. And again, clicking next, we're then given a few more options to customize the look of that particular object and we'll hit generate view. And again, objects will automatically be created by Appium in the background, ready for us to go. Now, in addition to creating that record summary, Appian out of the box will give us something called a record list view. So this is just a default view with nothing changed of all of the data uh, within our 
record. So if we click into list here, we can go and have a look at that and actually start to test out the basic application that we're starting to build. So obviously this is empty because we've not created any data, but those actions that we created earlier on, that first one of creating a new request is here and available for us to try. So we can click new request and then we're brought into the interface that we've just generated using that views um, generate action. So we can put in some information here. So we could search for an office name and you'll notice that it's actually pulling out a whole list of results. And these are office locations coming in from our existing office record. Similarly as well, we can also search for things like an existing employee. Now notice at this stage, it's just giving me a list of employee ID codes. So in our next episode where we're exploring the user interface changes that we might want to make, one of the changes we may want to change is actually having this show employee names rather than employee IDs. Similarly as well, with our priority, it makes sense to actually have this as a search, uh, a dropdown list rather than a search list, and perhaps even defaulting things like status rather than having that as a editable field by the requester, we could look to pre-populate that. But the key thing is here, we've got the ability to put in some information here, put in the date and even assign that to somebody as well. And if we hit create, our request will then be created and added into our list view, ready for us to move on. So to recap on what we've covered so far, we've created a brand new record, related it to existing records that we've got used elsewhere within Appian. And one of those was Salesforce backed. And we've also created some uh, actions to allow us to interact with that data and also a basic interface to allow us to view the record information. Coming up in our next video, we'll be having a look at how we can actually start to build out the user experience layer and build sites and interfaces for our users to interact with our application. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.